Good morning. It is Wednesday, April 13th. Uh, it is the Wednesday of Holy Week for this year, 2022. My name is Chris Paul. I am your seminarian from Sewanee. I am doing this morning prayer service on behalf of the Trinity Episcopal Church in Elkridge, Maryland. So welcome to each and every one of you. I hope you are having a Holy Lent and a blessed Holy Week. Today I'm going to be leading us through morning prayer service and we're gonna be doing it a little bit differently. I'm gonna be chanting quite a bit of it. Um, so there are a few things that we don't chant. I won't be chanting for the confession or we won't chant the Psalm. Uh, I want you to be able to join along with the Psalm. The Psalm for today is going to be Psalm 55 and that would be confusing to try to lead in a chant. And we do not chant the prayers at the end or the general thanksgiving. Uh, if you're not familiar with chant, you can just listen along and uh, pray for me that it will go well. And if you uh, would like to join in chanting, I will tell you where you can find some of the chants in the psalm, uh, songbook. As well, um, I will uh, encourage you that it is really kind of using more of just what is your natural voice and, and being a little bit sing-song with uh, what it is that we are going to be praying through chant. So um, let us begin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please join me in chanting the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand oh that today you would hearken to his voice the psalm for today is psalm 55 which can be found on page 660 in your book of common prayer 
Hear my prayer, O God. Do not hide yourself from my petition. Listen to me and answer me. I have no peace because of my cares. I am shaken by the noise of the enemy and by the pressure of the wicked. For they have cast an evil spell upon me and are set against me in fury. My heart quakes within me and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling have come over me and horror overwhelms me. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee to a far off place and make my lodging in the wilderness. I would hasten to escape from the stormy wind and tempest. Swallow them up, O Lord, confound their speech, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night the watchmen make their rounds upon her walls, but trouble and misery are in the midst of her. There is corruption at her heart her streets are never free of oppression and deceit. For had it been an adversary who taunted me, then I could have borne it. Or had it been an enemy who vaunted himself against me, then I could have hidden from him. But it was you, a man after my own heart, my companion, my own familiar friend. We took sweet counsel together and walked with the throng in the house of God. Let death come upon them suddenly, let them go down alive into the grave. For wickedness is in their dwellings, in their very midst. But I will call upon God, and the Lord will deliver me. In the evening, in the morning, and at noonday, I will complain and lament, and he will hear my voice. He will bring me safely back from the battle waged against me, for there are many who fight me. God, who is enthroned of old, will hear me and bring them down. They never change. They do not fear God. My companion stretched forth his hand against his comrade. He has broken his covenant. His speech is softer than butter, but war is in his heart. His words are smoother than oil, but they are drawn swords. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous stumble, for you will bring the bloodthirsty and deceitful down to the pit of destruction, O God. They shall not live out half their days, but I will put my trust in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading for today is from the Book of Lamentations. How the Lord in his anger has humiliated daughter Zion. He has thrown down from heaven to earth the splendor of Israel. He has not remembered his footstool on the day of his anger. The Lord has destroyed without mercy all the dwellings of Jacob. In his wrath, he has broken down the strongholds of daughter Judah. He has brought down to the ground in dishonor the kingdom and its rulers. He has cut down in fierce anger all the might of Israel. He has withdrawn his right hand from them in the face of the enemy. He has burned like a flaming fire in Jacob, consuming all around. He has bent his bow like an enemy. With his right hand set like a foe, he has killed all in whom we took pride in the tent of daughter Zion. He has poured out his fury like fire. The Lord has become like an enemy. He has destroyed Israel. He has destroyed all its palaces, laid in ruins its strongholds, and multiplied in daughter Judah mourning and lamentation. He has broken down his booth like a garden. He has destroyed his tabernacle. The Lord has abolished in Zion festival and Sabbath, and in his fierce indignation has spurned king and priest. The Lord has scorned his altar, 
disowned his sanctuary. He has delivered into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. A clamor was raised in the house of the Lord as on a day of festival. The Lord determined to lay in ruins the wall of daughter Zion. He stretched the line. He did not withhold his hand from destroying. He caused rampart and wall to lament. They languished together. Her gates have sunk into the ground. He has ruined and broken her bars. Her king and princes are among the nations. Guidance is no more, and her prophets obtain no vision from the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle for today is Canticle 14. I will be chanting it from the songbook in songbook 237. Your merciful promises beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring. You made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O oh Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O oh Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, in accordance with your great mercy and i will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life for all the powers of heaven sing your praises and yours is the glory to ages of ages amen your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. Our second reading for today is from the Gospel of Mark. Then he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a pit for the wine press, 
and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the season came, he sent a slave to the tenants to collect from them his share of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And again he sent another slave to them. This one they beat over the head and insulted. Then he sent another, and that one they killed. And so it was with many others, some they beat and others they killed. He had still one other, a beloved son. Finally he sent him to them saying, they will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him, killed him, and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle for today is Canticle 16, which I will be chanting from the songbook at songbook 248. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Continuing with the Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, we offer prayers for peace throughout the world. We continue to offer prayers of hope and love and support for the people affected by war in the Ukraine and in Russia. We pray for the people of this congregation. I ask for your prayers 
for myself and my seminarians and all of those who are preparing for ordination here at the School of, of Theology in Sewanee as well as in seminaries across our country. We ask for peace and healing for our families. We ask for guidance and wisdom and courage. We ask for the strength and grace to proceed through this tritium of holiest days. We ask for the grace and the salvation that come with Easter morning. We pray for all those who are suffering still through COVID and the effects that this pandemic has had in our society and throughout the world. We ask for prayers of encouragement. We pray for all those who have died and ask for the repose of their souls and the liftings of their spirits into your heavenly kingdom, O oh Father. I now ask for your prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continuing with the general thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. That concludes our morning prayer for this morning. I thank you all so much for joining me and for trying something new with the chanting. I hope you continue to have a blessed Lent and a blessed Holy Week as we proceed into Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday and Holy Saturday. And I wish you all a very blessed and joyful Sunday for Easter. God bless you all. Thank you for your support. Be well.